All right, so today I want to talk about one of the biggest things that could potentially hurt your ball python, and that is using a hot rock in your ball python enclosure. Let me tell you, if you have a hot rock in there, I would highly recommend pausing the video, going over to your ball python, and getting that heat rock out of the enclosure. Essentially what they are is they are designed for lizards. They get way too hot for ball pythons. And as a matter of fact, I've used to hang out on a lot of the reptile forums for years before I started doing YouTube videos. And it was kind of the same story over and over. And the first time I heard it, I was kind of shocked. They said, we don't know what's going on with their ball python. The belly is all red and the scales on the belly are falling off. And the first time you hear it, you're like, what in the world is going on with my ball python? Come to find out every single person that had the same issue was using one of those hot rocks. And the funny thing is, is the ball python is attracted to the heat. It'll kind of coil up on that hot rock because it doesn't really have anywhere else to go for the heat and it's way too hot for the snake and it damages the belly of the snake. So you definitely don't want to use one of those hot rocks. And as a matter of fact, I was looking at a video and some guy had a bunch of those hot rocks and he lined them all up and he was taking a temperature of all of them. And they ranged, you know, depending on the brand and the size, I'd say anywhere from 105 degrees all the way up to almost 120 degrees on some of those hot rocks. That is way too hot for a ball python. And speaking of temperatures, when I first started in ball pythons, I was kind of binge watching YouTube videos and, and, and doing all these reptile forms and everything, trying to just soak in all the information. And I kind of had a spreadsheet of all the information and someone said, oh yeah, yeah the ambient temperature should be this and the hot spot should be this. And so I wrote it down and then I saw another video and they used different temperatures and then another video with different temperatures. And it seemed like I watched 20 different people and they all had different temperatures for ball python. I was like, what in the world is going on? You don't, don't really know what temperature is right for your ball python. And then I found another breeder that said uh, if you go above 95 degrees, essentially what it does is it sterilizes your male ball python temporarily. So if you, if you bring it up to 95, some people say that it stimulates breeding, but it sterilizes your male temporarily. And then when you get into the breeding season, you really need to bring it down below 95 so the males aren't sterile. And you, you don't end up with you know whole clutches of slugs because your, your males are sterile. So, uh, and some people actually do kind of a night drop in a, in, during the breeding season and, and, and different temperatures during the day. And the problem is, is when I first started in ball pythons, I actually did the temperature drops and I found as soon as I changed the temperature in my, with my ball pythons, uh, they almost immediately they would all go off of food. And that is the last thing you want in the ball python breeding season because you want the females to continue to breed and eat as far as into the season as you can because once they start developing eggs, they fast you know, for like up to six months at a time. So then I found another breeder that actually didn't change the temperatures at all. And then I was like, that is what I want to do. I want to keep the temperatures the same year round. And the temperature that I use here in my reptile room is 80 degrees ambient. So the cold side is 80 and the hot spot is 90. And I would say probably, you could probably go down in the mid to low 70s. I wouldn't go probably below 73 for a cold spot for ball python. Wouldn't go much below that. And I definitely wouldn't go above probably 90 for a hot spot. And the only, the only way I would really use a hot rock, I was trying to think about, you know, if you had a hot rock and you still wanted to use it, probably the only thing you could really do to control the temperature would be to take like some kind of a, a temperature probe and like glue the probe onto the rock and then plug it into a thermostat where it keeps a, a dialed in temperature and you can really control the temperature with a thermostat versus just plugging it in and let the hot rock do its thing. And another thing, I'm not sure if it's, it's the same with the newer hot rocks, but I know pretty much across the board when I was researching the hot rocks a few years ago, they said when the hot rock fails, 
it fails on the on position. So essentially what it is is they have a built-in thermostat that keeps them at a certain temperature and if it fails, it fails on the on position and it's super, it gets super hot and that can really damage your snake. So I would highly recommend not using a hot rock for your ball python. I would use another type of a heat source. And I kind of want to show you some of the heat sources that I use, kind of how they're set up and kind of the, the thermostats that I use and how I control the temperatures for my ball pythons. All right, so I wanted to show you real quick kind of how I have my setup for the heat on the tubs on my ball python. So this rack right here is an ARS 5040. It's essentially a grow-out rack. I've actually had a female get big enough. I've seen some bigger breeders use this to breed females, but my really big females won't fit in here. So what I have here is tubs that just slide right out in this little bracket here. And if I set one on the table here, if you can actually look back at the heat source and essentially all this up front this is the cold side up here and then in the back I have this little it's kind of a u-shaped bracket flat on the top top with just little kind of angles on the side and what they essentially did is they took like a flex watt heat tape and they glued it underneath there so it's like flex watt that's protected with a metal bracket and the metal bracket just kind of slides right in the rack, right under all these tubs. So this one essentially heats this whole row all the way across here. And then from there, essentially what I do is I plug it into a thermostat controller. This is on a Herpstat 2. I have a whole bunch of different, you know, sometimes I use a VE100 like over here. This one I'm using a whole bunch of thermostats on this one. I'm actually using two Herpstat 4s and uh, another VE over here. And uh, essentially what I have is I have a controller on every single level because I want really dialed in heat control for all my females when they lay. have it all set to 90 degrees. 82 to about 80 to 82 ambient in here. And that's kind of how I have everything set up in my reptile room. So this is Lucy, my big reticulated python. She is a really big snake. She weighs probably close to 75 pounds now. And her enclosure is a little bit different. Actually, underneath her, right in the middle here, she has a little tiny heat strip that's probably maybe 25% of her whole body right there. I actually have that one set to 88. And then on top, I actually have a radiant heat panel up on top. And the radiant heat panel is essentially kind of almost like almost like a UV lamp in there that <laughs> essentially it radiates the heat down from the top on top of the snake. And retics are really particular about the temperature. They, they kind of like, you know, <clears throat> after they eat some food, they like it to be above, you know, 80 degrees, I'd say probably 80 to 85 when they're digesting. And then after they digest, they really like a cold spot. And the cold spot has to usually be below 80 degrees. So what I notice is, you know, she kind of goes on a feeding binge. And she's kind of in a really crazed feeding binge right now. So I don't really want to open this up. I just fed her a rat yesterday and she's looking for another one. So uh, I'm kind of going through the glass here. But essentially what happens is she'll eat like four or five or six really big rats. And then she'll go under that and she sees, sees she's kind of coiled up here. And then she'll digest her food. And then from there, essentially, uh, when, when she's done digesting, she really kind of goes crazy, wants to get out of this enclosure. This is a big six foot enclosure. And she kind of pushes against the glass and she'll put her nose right up here and start pushing really hard against like the lock. She knows like, you know, she like right in the corner. She like, she knows how to get out. And what that tells me is my temperatures need to be adjusted. So what I did actually is I adjusted this temperature uh, down to 77. So essentially what I should do is I should switch this uh, back up. Let's see, I should go back up to 80 because she kind of went from kind of a basking mode over to a feeding mode. And I always leave the bottom at 88 degrees. It's pretty much 88, I'd say it's pretty much the universal temperature for a hot spot for a snake. And you definitely, <laughs> you definitely don't want to go above 
you know, uh, I would say 90 degrees for a snake. Hot rocks will definitely get too hot. All right, so that is the lowdown on the hot rocks. I would definitely not use them for snakes. And if you're using them, I'd try to figure out how to control them, maybe control them with a thermostat or just get rid of them and use maybe some heat tape underneath your tank and typically what people do is they'll use heat tape on maybe a third of the tank or maybe half the tank and then keep the other tank at ambient and back when i was doing my research on temperatures the hot spots and the ambience and the incubators i actually realized there's kind of a sweet spot across the board and i was thinking i don't think i've never actually seen anyone do this but i was thinking you know you could actually keep your reptile room at 90 degrees which would be ideal because that's the temperature of the hot spot. That's the temperature of my incubator. So you can essentially pull the eggs right from the females. You can put them up on these racks and boxes and incubate them right in the room. And I'm starting to think, you know, maybe the ball pythons wouldn't mind being at 90 degrees all the time where they couldn't get out of the 90 degree heat, but it wouldn't really be a hot spot per se. The only thing that really kept me out of doing that approach is when I'm working in the reptile room, I don't want, really want to be in a sweatshop at 90 degrees. I think about 82 is the maximum that I can take working here in the snake room for a few hours. So that's when it pretty much went, you know, with a separate incubator and the hot spots at 90 and then kept the ambient at about 80 to 82 degrees. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.